Hi guys and good afternoon. Thank you for joining me at Mr. Crafty Man. So what we're going to be talking about in this video due to questions that uh, several of you viewers have asked me is uh, you've, you've wanted me to show you a close-up of the Uninet iColor 560 that I use for the majority of my projects and you've been asking how is it that I'm doing both heat transfers and sublimation with it? Uh, am, I, am I using the same uh, toner cartridges? And no, I'm not. So when you purchase the machine, it's not generally about $3,700 for the package. It comes with the heat transfer uh, white toner uh, cartridge and also the other, the other uh, toner cartridges. And it's called a white toner printer. Um, if you just Google white toner printer, you'll come up with several of them. But this one here, uh, I believe, is the best. It, there is a bit of a learning curve to it. It has a couple little weird quirks with it, but I found ways to work around them. And the quality, the output quality of this device definitely makes it worth dealing with the weird little quirks. So if you want to do sublimation with it, which I love sublimation, it's I almost love some sublimation uh, projects more than uh, heat transfer projects, you're going to have to buy the sublimation uh, toner cartridges. And those cartridges are a about sixteen hundred dollars, I believe, sixteen seventeen hundred dollars. So it's not cheap. But what you have to keep in mind is the output. You can do about seven thousand pages with it, and I, I imagine that would be seven thousand full pages. But very rarely am I printing a full page when I do sublimation. Um, generally, I'm just, uh, I'm just doing like a couple little designs on the same sheet of paper or something. Maybe I'm going to put it on a coffee mug or or on like a keychain or something like that. And another positive about this machine and the sublimation toner cartridges is this here does not require a special type of um, substrate or, or paper. You can just use normal printer paper and that's very cheap. When you do the heat transfer uh, with it there are special materials that are needed and we're going to cover that in another video that we do today for our Sunday Crafternoon project. So let's go over to the printer and I will uh, show you a closer look at it. See you there. Okay, so this is my Uninet iColor 560 printer. I have had it for several months now. When I first bought it, I bought the business pack, and the business pack came with different sorts of uh, printing materials and the, the heat transfer toner cartridges and some instructions and then the, um, the software. But what it didn't come with was the sublimation cartridges. So let's take a take a look at this here first. I want uh, I want to show you a few things about it. So when we open it up, inside of it here, you can see the various cartridges. Um, we've got our our uh, white or. Uh, black here inside it says you might not be able to see this but it says WKC we have yellow we have magenta we have our our cyan so these cartridges that are in it right now these ones here are the heat transfer cart or sublimation cartridges here and also up here it's telling you different configurations so it says color printing and let me make sure that you can actually see what I'm pointing at here. Okay, so up here it says standard printing. And it's showing you what order you put cartridges in. Spot color overprinting, it's showing you that configuration. Um, over here it says spot color underprinting. And something really neat about this uh, this printer here is this printer you can even 
print out um, heat transfers that you're going to put on dark colored shirts and that's because what it'll do is it'll put uh, a layer of white coating on the bottom and then it'll print the different colors on top so it's not transparent so it goes right on it so I'm going to show you how to swap out the cartridges in it so like I said right now we have sublimation dye um, cartridges in it but in a video that we're going to be making for our craft today um, we're going to be doing heat transfer so we're going to need to swap these out so something that's really important to do is make sure that you have the device powered off before you start swapping out the cartridges and the reason why let me show you is because these cartridges all have a chip on the side of them and if you have the power on it could potentially blow out the the chip and something else when you get these cartridges shipped to you they have this little orange um, protector on the bottom keep those because you can put your cartridges back inside of them and what I do is over here on the side you can see I keep the the cartridges sitting right there so I can just easily swap them out so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna swap them out in order really quick to show you how to do this I've already got the printer powered down so I start at the front so we'll take it just lift that one out put the, the one I'm gonna be using in place this one over in the little orange holder get the next one and they just go down there and they click right into place get this one out of here and the last one okay so it was that easy to swap our cartridges. Once we do that, we're just going to close the printer and power it on. And something I want to show you, I told you that there were some quirks about this printer. And I'm assuming that other people that have this printer are experiencing the same quirks because I notice everybody that, that's using these that's making videos is feeding their substrate through this bypass tray. And if you look at it here, it has this tray one. But I'll be honest with you, every time I have put uh, paper or uh, some of the other printing materials in here and tried to use that tray it ends up giving me an error message saying that um, that it's jammed up and I need to open up the front of it and clear a feed and to open up the front over here on the right hand side there's a little switch and you pull it and this opens up and I don't know if if this device right here is what is causing my my issues or not um, but what I do know is I don't have those same issues when I use the bypass tray down below but I'll tell you something that I have noticed about the bypass tray is after you have have sent your work to the printer it takes a minute or two for uh, for it to process in the computer and if you put your your paper or whatever it is you're going to be printing on in here first and push it in all the way when the printer decides that it's ready to print it's going to jam up and it's going to give you actually it won't be jammed up the paper will be in there but it's going to tell you it has a jam and it's going to tell you to clear it so instead what i do is i'll barely stick whatever substrate i'm going to be uh, printing on in here and then as soon as I hear the printer kick on and start to hum, I'll finish feeding it inside of there, and then I never have an issue. So that is kind of the, uh, the basic ins and outs of the printer itself. So in our project today, I'm going to go ahead and, uh, and show you how we actually do printing on this. Thanks for watching.